he could have easily pulled off here but is choosing not to but if they I suspect that if he pulls over here and is even close to stopping officers will move in at a rapid pace here to try to prevent him from getting back on the road and um, getting back into a chase scene here well, and certainly Gary the hope is that this person will decide to pull over and uh, stop and 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 in this peacefully and kind of went almost down the exit ramp he's heading down that ramp but uh looks like he's about to change his mind and uh pull back on the highway much to the frustration i'm sure of these police officers that he's not pulling over glad i'm sure that he's staying on the highway but uh slowing down. exit and that feeder road is brentwood star Brentwood Star Road. All right, and take a look at this uh, this wide picture as Gary shows us the traffic situation. Take a look at that. You can see all of that traffic stopped along the eastbound lanes of I-30 near Oakland Boulevard, where police are trying to stop this white Nissan Sentra. Uh, that is an incredible thing to see, Gary, and just an idea, some bit of evidence of how this is affecting uh, so many people right now. Yeah, this, the, those people have to be very frustrated because there's, there's a line of police officers that's not letting anybody through, and uh, you know they they're not going. There really is no place at this point. You can see the folks on the side of the road. Again, he's stopping, starting, stopping, starting. Uh, it's obvious he's not going to outrun them, but yet he continues to do this and refuses to give up. So there's something, something a little off here in terms of uh, what the plan is here. I can tilt up here and show you a little bit, but uh, there is no other offer on here for quite some time. Uh, I'm looking at least uh, a half a mile, if not more. I don't want to pan too far off of this, but at least a half a mile or more. Uh, before there's another exit or, 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 or an opportunity for this person to get off the highway. Okay, and Gary, as we can about all these folks, uh, I don't believe any of these folks are news media would be my guess, maybe one or two. That's just the public hoping to catch a glimpse of what's going on. Now, granted, they're up on top and, and out of harm's way in that area, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that they're dealing with. Uh, and officers don't have time to deal with that. And they probably won't deal with that particular incident unless it becomes a problem traffic-wise. But they've got uh, bigger issues to take care of here, keeping folks who are on. The officers themselves so far, right? Okay, I'm giving you a tight shot here. I'll zoom in here a second. And you'll see that um, this person has a cell phone. Uh, he appears to be talking on his cell phone. He's looking out the window, possibly uh, at us, at the attraction, and just weaving. We don't see anybody in either the front seat or the back seat, uh, but it appears to be an empty vehicle. But a, a very, very casual, acting very casual as he uh, one hand drives with one hand and, and visits on a cell phone with somebody uh, on the other hand. And uh, a very unusual shot here of being able to actually look inside this car and try and figure out what, what is going on here. You can see, uh, again, moving his hands, changing the vehicle, more interested in what the sideshow is outside than uh, anything else. And uh, unfortunately, that's probably feeding his uh, desire not to pull over, that you know, he's creating a sideshow spectacle, and he's probably pretty proud of himself for doing it. Yeah, he does uh, have a, a bit of a smirk on his face, at least from what we're seeing right now, this picture you're showing. And let me say that just a while ago, we passed the Cook's uh, Lane Bridge, and we're now hearing from Fort Worth police that uh, they, in fact, have gone on to that bridge and told people to get off quite quickly, and for two reasons. And this should, this should be emphasized to the people who are ahead of this chase, uh, that this person has a history of non... We don't know his name. Police obviously do. This person has a history of noncompliance and apparently some uh, some experience with the carrying of weapons. So this is why police are, are very concerned about people standing too close or impeding traffic or giving them a, or giving them some difficulty in trying to bring this this uh, chase to a close. Right now, his windows are all up, so that means that uh, police, I think, feel relatively comfortable. Looks like he's speeding up a little bit, Gary, from uh, what he was before. Yeah, speeding up a bit, and I, I see him spending more time looking out the window than he does looking uh, at the road. But, of course, traffic's been stopped, so he doesn't have much to worry about uh, in terms of traffic in front of him. But uh, much to his amu amusement, looking at us possibly and or the traffic on the side. He's right behind him. His hazards are on. 
So this camera shot is is headed east as he comes is headed west actually as he comes east toward our camera and that's that's what that looks like a blocked I thirty nobody is on this road except for that one motorist and the and the police officers who are following. Him. Now we've got sound, so this is what people are hearing coming toward them, which would explain why so many folks were getting out of their cars mm. to look because they could hear this. And you see that flat tire there. Yeah, the you right can see it passenger now. tire is flat. So, which is why this person has been driving at speeds of, uh, you know, around 10 miles per hour for such a long time. Something else to take into, into consideration is that's what he is hearing as well. Mm -hmm. He's been listening to those sirens the entire mm -hmm. time. Wow. And I can tell you from riding inside a squad car with the sirens going, it'll wear you down. It's loud. In addition to speakers. You, we understand the police have been speaking to this person through loudspeakers. And he's trying to carry on a telephone conversation as well. Right. So this is eastbound. Oh, this is uh, East Chase, the East Chase overpass we just passed underneath on eastbound I-30. You saw the news media there watching this as it goes by. And right now we're getting very close to uh, Arlington. Arlington police are going to be standing by doing the same things we're seeing police do in Fort Worth do as far as trying to clear people off those roads. And as, as we... Go ahead. Uh, he's just, uh, you'll see here on your screen here, just a, a second, he's going to pop up on the grass here, uh, change his mind at the last minute, and get off again back on an exit. Uh, I'm a little bit ahead of you only because we're on a delay, so I apologize for that. But uh, you'll see him. He's, he's uh, changing his mind at the last minute, cutting across grass, cutting through an intersection. There were some officers that looked like they were blocking him off, uh, not allowing him to go further on 30. And I believe that's what may have prompted him to do that at the last minute. And now we're running along the access road of I-30, approaching, I believe, uh, well, we're about a mile from Six Flags, uh, into a parking lot. We'll uh, see him into a parking lot here. Uh, officers, one, two, three, four, five, six officers speeding up here. And uh, he's going to turn left into this parking lot. Uh, a lot of officers speeding up trying to kick contain this. But uh, they're having a problem here scooting through this, this traffic. Luckily, not a lot of folks in this parking lot. He's yeah. going to turn, turn here and then come back out. And it appears he's going to get back on a north-south road. But not sure what that is. Yeah, Gary, let, 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 let me. Uh, you're, you're on. A, obviously, you're seeing this live. We're on a bit of a delay. Let it. Let us see if we can talk this through here. Now headed southbound, of course. Make a left turn here. Six. Relatively close uh, right now. Turning all the way around, so he's going back Six. to the north. Uh, right now, white four-door car has been leading police uh, on this chase. They've been on I-30 for at, for two hours. Here they are now in a residential part of Arlington. You see, he just turned left into some kind of. Uh, we can assume it's some kind of open parking lot. Mm -hmm. and uh, he's okay, this is the old TxDOT depot off of I-30. Um, and you see him just pick up speed there and rush through. And again, this is still on a flat tire. That's what we see him doing right there on a flat tire. And he's driving okay. over the median here and back onto Collins and around the traffic. Some uh, very dangerous maneuvers here. Uh, as we continue to watch this driver flee police. So he is right at I-30 in Collins. Up until now, this chase has, hasn't been that dramatic. He's been leading police going maybe 10, maybe 5 miles per hour on the highway. But then, a short time ago, he gets off the highway. He's now in Arlington. And now he's driving erratically through city streets. We've seen him go through neighborhoods. He's mm -hmm. going in and out, in between cars. Uh, he's whizzed by children walking uh, on the sidewalk. He has no regard for, uh, for any traffic. And there you see him driving on the... This is, just so you know where we are, this is the road to Six Flags that he's about to get on right now. So this is North Arlington. The westbound toward Cooper. On the right-hand side should be some kind of a golf course. Uh-oh. Well, now he's moved off of the main road, so this should be interesting to see. Gary, uh, you can see where he's headed. I don't know what is through there. Looks like he's trying to get... Uh this, this is an empty parking lot, a construction strip zone. Officers are moving in really soon. They really wanted to catch him inside there, but now uh, he's making his way back to the road, and he actually uh, will probably get out of this... Um, of this parking area and back onto the road again, which uh, is really disappointing because it's uh, 
traffic is picking up. The speed is picking up. Yeah. And uh, he's southbound yeah. now on, on uh, that. That would be southbound on Collins. Uh, it, Gary, if I'm correct, what you'll see up ahead of him on the left hand side, a few blocks down should be um, should, should be the, the stadium. Uh, and on the right hand side, of course, all kinds of traffic. But again, this is the busiest tra This is the busiest area in terms of retail in ter for Arlington, I think, in North Arlington. Right, Gary? Yeah, it's very crowded here. Okay, you'll see them cutting up across the sidewalk over a restaurant. Uh, I'm speaking just a little bit ahead here, uh, but um, it is a very, uh, very busy section of, of town. A lot of traffic, not a lot of pedestrian traffic, thankfully. But you'll see him cutting across here. Look at that, cutting across onto the streets again, trying to shorten his route and trying to lose these guys. But back out uh, now is going the wrong way down a street. Uh, this is just increased dramatically in danger. One way okay. down what appears to be, this is the ramp to get on, to get off That's, on one of these yeah. streets here. It's one way, and he's going the wrong way. And uh, yeah, here is, comes a... Go ahead, Gary. I think this is very dangerous. He's on, he's on the ramp to go the wrong way to the service road getting off of uh, getting off of 20. He may realize that, but he, he's going to have to turn around now. Well, there he goes. So he's getting on now, Gary. He's going to be going eastbound on, on 30. Is that correct? Yes, eastbound on 30. He almost got hit by that red car, but uh, now he's back on I-30 eastbound, picking up the speed yet again and uh, trying to get back on the highway, and he probably will be successful to that here just uh, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, he has found his way now back onto the freeway. In just a second, he'll be going past there. What you'll see in coming up in just a couple of minutes, six flags will be on your right-hand side, uh, 360. Uh, and then, of course, uh, headed after that, of course, into Grand 161, and then, of course, into Grand Prairie. Uh, but it uh, looks like he has managed to find his way uh, back onto the, the freeway. Police officers, of course, trying to, to catch up with him right now. Yeah, he's uh, actually lost quite a few of them. Uh, he's still got one or two behind him, but he lost a whole bunch of them. And, uh, but they're still got him in view, and obviously the helicopter does. And they're right next to him on the, the road. They're just waiting for that road to merge and uh, allow them to get right back on. But now they have the, the chore of breaking up this traffic again and keeping people away from, from this event. And that's, that, it's almost like they have to start all over again. And that, again, more strain on Fort Worth's resources. This is a very difficult situation for them. Yeah, yeah he's about to pass two major roads. Uh, 360 will be coming up in just a second. So 360 and I-30. He's on I-30 eastbound, headed toward Dallas. So that, uh, where he is right there, that, uh, I cannot remember the name of that road. Uh, but it's also a, a main exit. But Ballpark Way also coming up uh, relatively quickly. But after that will be... 360, and then shortly after that will be, I think, uh, 161. If we're heading north on 161, but right How now again on, on I-30, uh, looks like he's headed on the he's headed to the east, fuel. Uh, headed toward the Grand Prairie right now. Police officers uh, again behind him uh, in this pursuit that's been going on now since uh, since about 1:45 that we have been following all of this. So the best part of the of the uh, of the afternoon they've been following him. We initially heard that this was a simple traffic stop, but now we've learned based upon sources that Lawrence Akalik has uh, that this individual may have some extensive uh, involvement uh, with the justice system in terms of having gone to prison for 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 drugs. May also be a suspect in terms of being a drug dealer right now. Uh, and is trying to elude police because of the situation uh, that he's experienced in the past. Tanya Eiser joins us now. She's got some more information. Tanya, again, has extensive uh, background with regard to dealing with law enforcement. Go. I understand that uh, he's going to wreck out. Watch this picture as we come up. That's a police unit you see there. Let's see what happens as he pushes to the right. Well, there we go. There's the bumper. Yep, they're getting him stopped. That was a, that was a SWAT There's vehicle. The That's yeah, you see four SWAT vehicle. The on the side of it. The using the SWAT vehicle. Looks like a person trying to they get out of the back cat, right there. Apparently. Police officers coming out both sides of them. Oh, sorry. Police officers coming out both sides of him right now. Some smoke coming from the, the, the white car of the suspect. Officers trying to come into the, to the inside. Again, this trace has come to a close. Asking him to get out, and it looks like he either cannot or will not. You see them poking at the window. They'll be coming around to the other side uh, and momentarily. This is a SWAT unit that's come around that's, pulled, that's brought this to a close. Police officers, again, there he is 
trying to crawling out the window right now. Police officers come around, grab him, pull him out of the vehicle, bringing him to the ground now. Officers look like they're securing the situation. They don't seem to be concerned about anyone else being inside. They brought the suspect out of the vehicle. It has wrecked. Uh, so it looks like the officers are okay. The suspect now in custody, police officers securing the scene. Tanya uh, Iser joins me. Tanya, did you get a chance to see all that? Well, uh, having some difficult. Oh, I have. I'm watching it right now. Obviously, they, they used one of their SWAT vehicles to bring this thing to an end. Uh, talking to law enforcement folks, what they're saying, obviously, this became a life safety issue to allow this continue, and that's why they got the SWAT vehicle involved in, and ended this thing in the way they did. We'll, be, we'll have more on the four about this, obviously. Tanya, Tanya, I'm not, I cannot, I cannot. Uh, we'll be taking Tanya, a break now, and uh, like uh, obviously we'll have more on the 4 o'clock show. Into custody. Let's take a short break. Uh, News 8 at 4 starts in just a moment. Right. You're, you're watching um, NBC5. News first at four, and as we begin the four o'clock hour, we continue to follow this chase that has wound through Tarrant County for the last couple of hours. It uh, started out as a slow speed chase with a number of police officers in pursuit, and now it continues through Arlington. Don, what's now, happening right now? Now you see at the top part of our screen a tactical vehicle involved. Uh, there may be plans to uh, end this pursuit uh, with the tactical team uh, at some point uh, on the freeway. All right, Don, so we've been watching this go down for a couple of hours. If it looks like they're getting ready to use a tactical team, why hadn't they done this before? What would your guess be? That's something that Fort Worth PD will have to answer. There have been a number of opportunities for them to stop him on the freeway when he was going much slower. Uh, however, it appeared they wanted to try and negotiate with him to get him to pull over uh, safely instead of having to use some sort of force. You see parts of the tire are now starting to shred off that car and he's going to get to a point where he's not able to to control it as well. He's going to have to pull over at some point. That tire, we just saw a piece of it fly off. Uh, police in pursuit, but traffic still going by. They're, they're, they just went by the ballpark, and here he is going around other vehicles that are there on the highway. A number of police cruisers are right behind him. And as you can tell, he, it doesn't look like he has any uh, plan on slowing down. And if you are wondering where they are right now, they just passed Six Flags, the amusement park, on the right side. So this is eastbound I-30. Uh, this tire on this car is shredding. It's, we just saw a piece fly off. There is a tactical vehicle. And it appears the tactical vehicle is, is executing a pit maneuver. They've put him into the wall. They've okay. stopped it. This vehicle this is, is stopped. Right at 30 and 360, Don. What's happening? Right now, they'll make a felony stop. They'll try and get him to get out of the car unless the tactical team removes him from the car. Okay, so now you see officers out, guns drawn, pointed right at the suspect. They don't know what he has in the car. They don't know if he's armed. And there you see them trying to get him to come out. They've, take, they've taken decisive action to stop this pursuit. They're trying to get him out of the vehicle at this point. He doesn't appear to be cooperating. I don't know if he's been disabled in this crash or if he's simply not cooperating. It looks like he's climbing out the window now. And he is obviously not going to get any further than where he's gone. So police uh, have him on the ground. Um, and this is a very different team that had been following him uh, than we saw patrol officers following him earlier. Who are these guys, Don? This appears to be the, the tactical team from Fort Worth PD. And at some point, you saw the vehicles change. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw a pickup truck, a four door pickup truck involved, and you certainly saw this heavy vehicle involved. And I think at some point, when they entered the city of Arlington and got to a residential area, Fort Worth PD made the decision it's time to end this pursuit on our terms and not his terms. So this suspect is now down, uh, taken into custody by police. They pulled him out of that car as he tried to climb out of the back window there after police SWAT stopped this vehicle. Uh, and what we can say is, after having watched this for two hours, is that we did not see any other vehicles involved in an accident because of this. It does not appear that any other citizens were hurt 
because of this lengthy chase. And again, police have now ended this chase right there in the middle lanes of I-30 eastbound, not far from Six Flags. And I-30 is where most of this chase happened. They received the suspect on his feet. Again, we do not know why he was running from police. We do not know uh, whether this all started with a traffic stop or an attempted traffic stop. And so I think once he got into a residential neighborhood in Arlington, uh, they decided it was time to go ahead and intervene and see if they couldn't bring a safe end to this pursuit. And that, there is our suspect. Uh, we've been watching for the last couple of hours in a chase that moved slowly down I-30 on both directions. Um, and then just ended in Arlington near 360 and I-30, not far from Six Flags. Uh, and he is there on the side of the road with um, some injuries uh, to his face, which could have occurred uh, when police stopped the car or even when he attempted to climb out of the back window. Um, but he does appear to have some blood on his face. And you do see uh, medics attending to him there on the road. So this is happening right uh, in the middle of I-30. This all started there in East Fort Worth at about 145. It went all the way to Ridgemar Mall, then went back to the east side, all at very slow rates of speed between 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then it wound its way through Arlington. The suspect led police through the city streets of Arlington, around the ballpark, around Six Flags Over Texas, around uh, neighborhoods as well going in and out through traffic, going the wrong way on some roads. Mm -hmm. Then he eventually got back onto I-30, and that's when, that's when you saw what just happened. The pit maneuver, the SWAT team came in, got this guy to stop, and pulled him out of the car, and there he is assessing him. Yeah, and there they are assessing and, him. And they are treating him right now, treating his injuries. You see them putting a neck brace on them. And you know, we should point out we've been following this for a couple of hours, and this is our first good look at this suspect. Um, we saw him on the phone in the car and uh, looking out of the window, but now we see him uh, head on exactly uh, the person we've been watching police follow for this length of time. They just put a neck brace on him. Uh, we did see the EMTs there um, just checking him out and checking to make sure to see if he has any injuries, and you do see a stretcher there. Uh, we saw an ambulance following behind for a, quite a, a quite a distance, um, and uh, you see that they're about to put him on a backboard there and uh, possibly take him off in an ambulance. Don, with all your years of experience with the Dallas County Sheriff's Department, do you think that this ended the way it should have? Oh, absolutely. At, at some point, it becomes so dangerous that you have to intervene and shut the chase down, and it got to that point. How much time do you think we can? How much time you have? Can we? Do we? Can we stick it out till they put him on the gurney? <clears throat> Jack, when they put him in the ambulance, we're gonna have to go. Okay. Just west of 360. 